thank you to the Carnegie Center for having me um, to do what I just do naturally, which is run my mouth. Um, so I'm going to take you through this trip I took about a month ago to Japan. Life-changing trip. I advise anyone here in the room, save up your money and go. It's the best thing I've ever done. So. Let's just keep moving. April 21st through May 3rd, Tokyo and Osaka, and then a day trip to Nagoya was involved in this trip. So let's get started. We'll have a QA and a at the end, so keep your questions. Please turn off your um, uh, camera phones, no flash photography, please. <laughs> All that stuff. So. Flying over Alaska, I believe, on the way to uh, Narita Airport just outside of Tokyo. So, a lot of snow, glaciers, all that kind of stuff. Very beautiful. Welcome to Japan. So, I finally landed and I was like, wow, I finally made it here. So. <laughs> I arrived on a Friday at, I think I got to my hotel at about 5.30 after flying for 13 hours. And immediately after getting to my hotel, a friend of mine, Don Dada Dub Kratzner, and a new friend I met, Ricky, met me at the hotel and were like, we're going out drinking and eating food and going to toy stores. And so I just hit the ground running. No time for rest. So, it was awesome. Um, what is that, a karaoke bar, I think? Just like, every, there was sensory overload. Everywhere you looked, there were signs, there were characters. It was just like, it was too much to take in. I'm still digesting everything from this whole trip. Um, so, Second day I'm there, I wake up at 8 a.m. in the morning after sleeping for like two hours because my friend Don, here in the middle, said, well, if you think you're up to it, we can go see Goto-san at his studio because he's working on some figures for me to bring to ToyCon UK next week. And I'm like, Goto-san? Like, this guy has painted figures that I own in my own collection for years and years and years. So basically this guy over here has been painting toys for 30 or 40 years. His father painted monster toys. His father's father painted monster toys. And he's basically got this little shed behind his house where he sits on his knees with a blanket over him. And he's got all these airbrushes suspended by bungee cords. And he just, no man like this paint is highly lethal first of all you must understand very dangerous so he has no face mask no gloves like a friend my friend Ricky said he's like the motor head of or he's like the Lenny of kaiju paint because he just does not care and so he painted these figures for us while we were there and this was kind of the beginning of the trip where I was like if it gets any better than this, like, I don't know where it's going to go. So there's all of us with Goto sign in front of this little shack there in the back. And those are the figures he painted for us. I know it's kind of inappropriate. It's gorilla, um, whatever. Um, I believe this was my view from the hotel in Tokyo which me and my friend stayed at like a budget business hotel where the room was based. There wasn't enough room for me to put my suitcase in between the bed and the desk. Like super small. The shower was like an all-in-one where basically you just stood on the floor in front of a drain and you took a shower from the sink. But very affordable, so. Oh, my sweet boss. So, this is one of the things I miss the most about my trip. Everywhere you go, there are vending machines with either alcoholic beverages or coffee. Exactly. And so, 
My sweet mistress is my boss cafe au lait. So each, each machine had like a hot line and a cold line, all in one vending machine. So you could either get hot coffee or cold coffee. And on average, they were about 110 yen, which was like a dollar and 10 cents. So every day I would drink like three or four of these coffees. And then I found out later that uh, Tommy Lee Jones is the official spokesperson for Boss Coffee in Japan. So there's a whole series of commercials you can look up on YouTube with Tommy Lee Jones where he plays an alien coming down to Earth for the first time and discovering Boss Coffee. And once you've had it, you'll understand. It's a beautiful thing. Oh, God, I miss it. Uh, I believe that was just a tower in Osaka outside of my... Um, where I was staying with my friend Funny Ara, who was basically my tour guide for 80% of this trip, and kind of got me um, clearance into certain situations that I normally would never have seen. Um, part of the glory of this trip was that I stayed with a close friend, and I did a lot of kind of locals type of situations, as opposed to just being a tourist wandering around. I got to do a lot of stuff that was just really um, just normal Japanese type of activities. So these are two of my heroes. The third day I was there, we went to a big toy show called Super Festival. And this is Hitty, who owns a company called Secret Base. And then this is Hikaru who owns, is a co-owner of a company called Bounty Hunter, which is basically like a lifestyle brand slash toy company. And they were both at the show, and I've collected these guys' toys for like 15 years, so like I was totally fanboying out over the fact that like I got to hang out with them. And Sid Vicious happens to be his hero. So my friend Funny Ara gave him that little lookbook, and he was stoked about it. And I kept running into them and taking more photos, and they were like, who is this guy? <laughs> so women only, front carriage of train between 7.15 and 9 o'clock, reserved for women, as far as Shinjuku. So like, I took so many photos of signs because all the signs were just like mind-blowing to me. Um, but there was an exclusive car on the train for women only between those hours. So I was like, no, I'm going to take a picture. This was, I think, the third night. Uh, there's my friend Funny Ara, who obviously has had a few drinks already that evening. This is our friend Pusshead, who's kind of a like, big deal poster artist. He's done all the Metallica stuff you've ever seen. He's done a bunch of toys, and we went to an Italian restaurant that served horse meat, and I still regret that I did not order the horse meat at the restaurant. But I told all them, I was like, in Kentucky, we race horses, we don't eat them. So, and this is a friend of ours, Andy, from the UK, who happened to be in town the same weekend, and his wife. They were on their hunt, they were on like their 10 year anniversary or something. And Pusshead always makes that hand sign anytime you take a photo of him. Uh, just a cute sign. I don't know what it meant, but it was a cute cat, so I took a photo of him. So the second day I was there, we went to see the Stone Roses at Budokan, which is like a legendary venue in Tokyo. Cheap Trick recorded like a huge live album there. Cheap Trick at Budokan. Paul McCartney, everyone's recorded live albums at this venue. So it just so happened that the Stone Roses were playing there, and I'm a big fan of like shoe gaze or whatever you want to call it. So we went to the show and it was a blast. And that's me looking very excited. Um, just a cute train car and me just giving the thumbs up. Which, by the way, one of the only things I lost in Tokyo on my trip was this pin on my jacket that said pervert. I think someone stole it at some point. 
I just like that because it looked like Hemingway and it was a cream puff flavored drink called Beard Papa. I never tried it, but it was only $1.40, so it looked like a bargain. <laughs> um, so the third or fourth day I was there, we went to Disney Sea, which Disney has two different parks in Tokyo. They have a uh, Tokyo, they have a uh, Disneyland, and then they have Disney Sea, which Disney Sea is more of like a um, less rides but more architecture and stuff to see. And funny story about this before I was going to go visit, I asked my friend Funny R, I said, I'd really like to go to Disney. And he's like, No, I'm not interested. Call one of your other friends, like this and that. I don't care about it. Well, then Sunday at the toy show, he's like, Oh, I think we're going to go to Disney tomorrow. And I was like, What are you talking about? He's like, oh, well, Dennis is here from California, and this person's going, this person's going. We're going to go to Disney. And I was like, but you told me you hated Disney. And he was like, oh, well, we're going. So, and they were still celebrating Easter on, like, the second week of May or something like that. And I was like, funny, Ara, they're still celebrating Easter here. Do they not know? It was, like, a month ago. And he's like, oh, the Japanese don't care. So, there was Easter everywhere. This was the Nautilus ride, which was um, the one we were most excited to buy merchandise from, but they didn't have any merchandise from the ride. Um, but basically, that's just a prop sub. I was hoping that we were actually going to get on that and ride it around, but that wasn't the case. Um, but basically, you just ride through the water, and I think there was a sea monster at the end or something. So it's fun. But again, you can see the scope. Basically, Disney built a theme park off of Tokyo Bay. So they basically dug out a huge ocean and then built up upon it for the theme park. But we really wanted to get captain's hats for the Nautilus, and there were none to be found. Um, that was a big mountain. I guess at Disney, I think there was a ride that cascaded down the other side. Um, those were some of the toys I bought that were actually on my list, and I did not think I would find them. And at the toy show, the company that makes these was set up across the aisle from us, and in a very poor exchange of Japanese to English, I asked them if they had these toys, and they like pulled them out of a box from underneath. And I think I bought this set for like $80. And two days later, I saw it at one of the toy stores in Tokyo for like 300 bucks. So it just, it helps to ask. But those two were on my list. What are they, Paul? These, <laughs> well, funny you ask. Yes. These are the Mothra twins that you may recognize from several Godzilla movies. They also are referred to as the Peanuts. And these are the two that summon Mothra to come and save humanity. So when you see the two little girls, and it's usually like very bad superimposed of like two live little women, and they go, Masira. And then you see they came with two cute little Mothras. Isn't that nice? And then this woman here is from Invasion of the Astro Monster, which is uh, Godzilla versus King Ghidorah. And you can barely see there's a little tiny King Ghidorah in there as well. I always liked her outfit. Maybe one day I'll get one. And the other one? Well, this is Ultraman and Balton, which was actually a festival exclusive from several years ago that I was lucky to pick up from another vendor at the show. And they're clear, and you can barely see they have like pipe cleaners inside them, which just kind of kicks it up to another level. <laughs> so I was very excited to find all these because it was actually things that were like on my list of toys to find in Japan. And then Busca, who's just like a cute little character. He's owned by the same company, Suburia, Suburia, that also does Ultraman. And since they were across the uh, aisle from us, I had to buy more toys because I was there. 
Fusca. Um, oh, Chew High. So these are some of my favorite things that I miss dearly from Japan. This is a yokai monster, which is an umbrella creature, which is kind of a Japanese folklore monsters. There's numerous of them. I got a tattoo of one of them on my leg while I was over there. Um, this is actually a figure of my friend Don that you saw in the second or third photo of the presentation, Don Kratzner. And this is a photo of, or this is a figure of himself that he made. Um, this is my favorite Japanese candy, which is Meiji Apollo, and it's like a strawberry and chocolate candy. Kind of looks like a pine cone. I still have like five boxes left that I brought back, and I'm just eating them very slowly. Um, this was an energy drink I bought at 7-Eleven because I felt like total hell the next morning, and I needed something to get me going, so I bought this. Um, and this is Chew High, 5% alcohol by volume. Much like the canned coffee, you come across vending machines full of alcoholic beverages and cigarettes. Um, and you have to have a special card to access the machines to prove that you're of age. And my friend Don, who's an American who now lives in Japan, one of the complaints he made to me is that he's been trying to get a card for the cigarette machines for like 10 years, and they keep turning him down because his last name sounds like an American last name. So he thinks it's like some kind of thing they have against him. Um, and then Kieran Chuhai. So this is a canned vodka soda beverage. My favorite happened to be uh, grapefruit and lemon flavored. 5% by volume. I think you can go as far as 8 or 9%. They have other offerings um, at 7-Eleven. So basically every morning, me and my friend Funny Aura would kind of prepare for our day. We would basically leave at about 10 or 11 in the morning. We would be gone till about 8 or 9, and then we would return to our room or his home, drop off our bags of stuff that we had bought, and then go back out till like 2.30 or 3 o'clock in the morning. I think I slept like 15 hours in 12 days that I was over there. Um, but every morning we would buy a couple cans of Chew High, a couple cans of beer, maybe a sandwich. Like 7-Elevens there were incredible. You could get fresh sushi, you could get tempura, you could get an egg salad sandwich that would like change your life. Like it was amazing. Adult magazines, anything you wanted, it was there. Um, so we would buy these cans of Kira Chew High, and then they would also sell a sealed cup of ice, which was called party ice. It would say that on the cup, and it was basically a plastic cup full of ice with a sealed top. And I remember one, several days after we were there, we went into a non 7-Eleven convenience store, and they just had ice. And my friend Faniara looked at me and he was like, Paul, they don't have party ice. He's like, this does not look good for our day. And I was like, well, Faniara, if we get enough chew high, like we can kind of circumvent the loss of the party ice and just keep the party going. Um, so yes, I miss the chew high very much. And you can't find it anywhere here. I've already tried. Tokyo Disney, the Big Globe. This was a friend of my friend Funny Aras that hung out with us. Another day of boss and like a croissant from the hotel lobby Japanese breakfast, which the hotel we stayed at had a complimentary breakfast. And it consisted of like seaweed salad, cold noodles, some cold like croissants, and I think like a cup of tea or something. So like, oh, and like little mini sausages, like little Smokies, which I ate the first morning and after that I was like, I should probably lay off those sausages because it ruined my day. So I moved on to just canned boss and a lovely croissant. 
So this is a hotel in downtown Tokyo that actually had a life-size Godzilla head on the roof of the hotel. And it was like crawling out of the roof, and there was a point, which I don't think we have the photo on here, I posted a video on Facebook, where there was like a hole in the stone where you could pet him, and he would start to growl at you. <laughs> so, we had to buy a beer to like get up to the top floor to see this Godzilla, but it was worth every six dollars or whatever we paid for it. That's me and my friend Ricky. Oh, that's funny, our and Ricky, who we all went to the Godzilla Hotel together. He's from New York, and actually I met him the first night I was in, in Tokyo with our friend Don, and he happened to like know all the same people I knew, so we just kind of hit it off and just partied all week long. It was fun. Betty Boop, because, like, why not take a picture of Betty Boop? I think it's a phone card for 300 yen, so it's about $3. Current exchange rate is about 100 yen to a dollar, which is very good. So if you're going to go to Japan, go now, because you'll get your money's worth. Um, so this is the mascot, my friend Funny R with the weird Amish beard that he has since shaved off. Um, this is the mascot for his store, Astro Zombies, in Osaka. And I've known him for probably eight or nine years, and he hosted me a majority of the trip. Um, so that's his figure. And then this was another figure that I purchased while I was there that was on my list. And it's kind of the first figure that started a movement. If you remember seeing the photo of Hitty earlier that I was with, um, it spawned a whole movement of figures that are basically fighters. So you notice they all have boxing gloves of some sort. Um, so yeah, I was pretty excited to get that. And that's probably a beer behind us because Funny R likes to drink beer. There's the Godzilla head. Look how terrified I am, it's about to eat me. And then surrounding this head were all of these stone like frescoes of Godzilla doing different stuff. So it was pretty awesome. And every hour he would growl. There's me and Funny R looking terrified in front of Godzilla. The hotel gracery, she, she, Gasu, I think? Second year anniversary. I just thought that was a cool little house that we passed on the way to 7-Eleven to get our chew high, so I took a photo. So there was a Hello Kitty like bus just parked, not on a rail or anything. And this strange old lady was sitting on it, so I took a picture of her without her permission. <laughs> and there were also all these large fiberglass figures inside. It was pretty cute. So much cute there. Everywhere you look, there's something cute. Even my friend Funny R was like, God, there's so much cute, I'm over it. I was like, well, you live in Japan, dude get with it. Um, there were a ton of these like outdoor malls where you would walk for miles and miles and miles. Oh, look, there's Burger King right there. Um, just full of restaurants, stores, little convenience stores, everything. And I don't know what she's eating, but it looks delicious. Um, so this was a conveyor belt sushi restaurant that we went to. There's my buddy Rick, Funny Ara, looking overwhelmed by the uh, sushi. And basically you would place your order on this screen, and within like three minutes, a tray would just shoot down this track and land in front of you, and you would take your food off of it and hit a button, and it would shoot back away. And I think I like, we all ate till we were like just ready to explode for like 15 or $20 a piece, including beer. So it was awesome. Some of the sushi from that restaurant. And then I didn't eat there, but I just thought it was a pretty impressive window display. Avoca avocado, yes, avocado only. 
Tri Tokyo style, and then they had the M and M's guys in front, which I thought was even weirder. So yeah, why not take a picture? Um, so this was in Tokyo. I got tattooed at their Osaka location. This was in Harajuku, which is kind of like the fashionable district in Tokyo where whenever you see photos of all the kids like dressed up to the nines and all like the crazy outfits, it's in Harajuku. So I coined us the Harajuku boys, but my friend Funny Arm protested it the entire day. He didn't want to be part of the Harajuku boys. That's the bullet train arriving to take us to Osaka. I think it moves like 180 or 200 miles an hour. Um, and there's a little bit, I mean, the scenery is beautiful. You just see rice fields as far as you can see, beautiful green hills. The weather was great while I was there. Um, and it was just fun just looking out the window. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I mean, it. Within minutes, it's just like on the move. Um, I think that was us on the train. That was one of the toys I bought and then my friend Funny R's mascot. There's a delicious chew high on ice. See, party ice right there. You, you can see half of it. Another outdoor mall, I believe this one is in Osaka. You see people wearing these face masks everywhere. Uh, oh no, that's not gonna Broadway, so that is Tokyo. Um, again, just another huge outdoor shopping mall full of wonders beyond your wildest dreams. That was my view on the fifth floor of my friend uh, Funny Ara shop in Osaka. He has a shop, basically the first two floors of the building are a store. The third floor is the dining room, kitchen, uh, guest bedroom. And then the fourth floor is his bedroom and just rooms upon rooms of collections. And then the top floor, I would see had a little spot for me out on this balcony um, where I could sit up there and smoke cigarettes and just watch what was going on. And then this place here was like a beef cutlet restaurant that like would have a line of 50 people every morning before they opened. And it's basically just like a fried beef cutlet on rice. So that was my view every morning and every evening, just looking down the street. Uh, that's my friend Ricky in front of a life-size statue of Baram 1, which is kind of an old live-action Japanese TV show character. And that statue was probably like $15,000, which is why he looks the way he does. And then that's me in front of the toy store. I think that's me in front of the Bounty Hunter store, which is kind of a punk rock boutique slash toy store. We just wanted to look tough. I think that's another, that's the morning view of my little um, perch above. Um, and then apparently what my friend Funny Art had told me is this whole street here is all anime stores. So every morning we would like walk down this street to go catch the train and there would be lines and lines of people waiting to get like special premiums and stuff at these stores. Oh my God, Frankenstein's about to wring my neck. That was in his office slash storage space. Uh, whatever, life-size Frankenstein statue, no big deal. So one of the best meals I had in Osaka was at my friend Funny Ara's buddy's um, curry restaurant, which was called Slayer Curry. And all they play is Slayer while you're sitting there eating. The different heats on the menu are according to Slayer songs, and it was one of the best meals I had. There's the cook.
in his official Slayer apron that someone sent him from the States. That's me trying out for my uh, position as the Glico man. Look how enthusiastic I am. Um, this was on our way to a family flea market where someone had just taken a plush Jaws and put it on the sign. So this was one of, there were probably six or seven, seven moments where I was asked to cover up my tattoos in Japan, which you think, Really? Like Japan has a thing against tattoos? Well, it's still kind of like an edgy type of thing there where a lot of criminals and um, just like general riffraff have tattoos in Japan. Um, it's kind of linked into the mafia from years and years ago. Um, but we were going to go out to this flea market and I was wearing a shirt that said, um, there's a couple kids, but this isn't that bad. I had a shirt on that said, do you remember that time somebody shot RoboCop in the dick? And my friend said, could you please put your jacket on? And I was like, is it because of my t-shirt? And he was like, no, it's because of your tattoos. Like, we're going to a flea market where there's like parents with their children. Like, they don't want to see that shit. And I was like, all right, dude, I'll wear my Ultraman jacket which he then proceeded to make fun of me for wearing an Ultraman jacket. <laughs> but anyhow, there were certain instances while I was there, like when I went to catch a cab, and he was like, you should put your jacket on, because if not, they may not pick you up. Um, so moving on to the flea market. So this was a fun afternoon until a typhoon blew in at about 2 o'clock and started to topple all these tents over. Uh, but it was fun while it lasted. That's me in my geisha outfit. Um, this woman here is a friend of Funny R's wife, who is a geisha stylist. And I asked her if it would be disrespectful of me to get suited up in a geisha robe. Well, apparently he told them all that I was a homosexual, so they all laughed incessantly throughout the entire process. <laughs> He likes to give me shit. <laughs> so there's me being cute in my geisha garb. And once again, pretty little flower. This is just a cool sign of an owl. I don't know what it stands for, but I liked it. So many signs, all these signs. Like, look at that whale, how cute is that? Something for five dollars. <laughs> After another user finished, um, it might have been for the bathroom. I bet it was. Another cute little guy. One more. That was for the blood drive. At one point we walked by a blood drive uh, truck. And that's their mascot for giving blood. Again, cute. Who knew these were like droplets of blood on its head? Um. This was a subway sign. There were so many signs. There were like signs to like watch out for perverts, taking photos of your skirt. There were like signs not to get your hand crushed off on the train doors. It was like, and they were all so cute. Like you trust those. Well, I don't know about that guy, but you trust him. That's actually a Toho Cinema, so that's a movie. Um, just another outdoor market with shrimp. Apparently they had shrimp. I heard they were delicious. I should have tried some. Sato-chan, who you see this guy everywhere. He's a pharmaceutical company mascot. And this particular one was probably like three and a half feet high, which I would have loved to have bought and brought back, but it was like $8,000. But you see him everywhere. And then a monkey drinking a beer. Come on, I had to take a picture of that. So this was a restaurant that we walked by where you basically could order an entree with a, a bacon ribbon and then a rice ball in the shape of this character's head. That's, this is one of the moments where my buddy Funny R was like, oh, everything's so cute, can I just get like a rice and bacon meal that doesn't look like some little guy. 
Oh, and he's got a ham hat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, they look like it. We didn't eat there, but it looks delicious. And you've got a little greenery, too, for the digestion. <laughs> um, so we happened to find an Ultraman store in a mall, which is kind of a weird thing coming from the States to like walk into a shopping mall and find an Ultraman store. And they were having like a special sale that day where you got a free cape with each figure you bought. So I got like a ton of buttons and a couple free capes. So, I mean, who could beat that? 429, go back next year, get your free capes. This was a police officer, which I just thought he looked dapper. And I asked him if I could take his photo and he instantly like kind of put himself together. Tried to, look, tried to look stoic in front of the Ultraman store. Um, I think that's a bathroom sign. It's like, if you need to pee, you should probably go over there. I just liked him. Oh, ramen. Chabutan ramen. So we went, again, this was in like a shopping mall. Like the fifth or sixth floor, we find this ramen place. And basically, you went to a machine and fed your money into it and then picked out what you wanted off the display, and then it gave you a ticket, and then you went and sat at your table and you gave the waitress your ticket, and then they would bring you your food. And in Japan, gratuity is like, doesn't happen. You do not tip. You don't tip your servers, you don't tip your cab drivers. I asked my tattooist if I could tip him, and he agreed to it, but it's just not something like, tips are included in everything. So don't go over there and tip. But that was a delicious bowl of ramen. And some uh, dumplings. Um, these are, uh, this was just one of the many, vend you see vending machines there everywhere, full of all kinds of things. This one had pinwheels that you could put in your hair. Um, some were not quite as innocent, if you catch my drift. Um, just all myriad, I mean, just vending machines, vending machines, vending machines. At one point I went into a uh, Gashapon parlor that was just probably five or six hundred machines lined up on each wall as high as you could reach with just all manner of toys. I think this was a comedy club. I just like those figures and I think, I don't think it's in the presentation, but they also had people wearing costumes, like running around dressed as these people and I think I posed with a couple of them. So that is the uh, Hitachi Tower in Osaka. And I actually did a little bit of research for you folks. The Osaka Tower is referred to as the Tutsinkaku Tower, which advertises Hitachi. It caught fire in 1943 and was disassembled so they could use the steel to manufacture uh, planes during the war, and then they built a new one in 1956. But it continually changes colors throughout the night. And then this is a friend of mine, Jason Ramey, who him and his wife happened to be there on their honeymoon the same time that I was there. And I actually DJed their wedding last summer, so it was just kind of weird that they were there at the same time. So we partied. Um, just the cool, that's again, that's in Osaka, just down this promenade of shops. Oh, it's a cat with a cup of tea and a bird chasing him. Why wouldn't you take a picture of that? Another shot of the tower. Um, I believe this is outside of the Pufferfish restaurant, which I don't know how many of you have seen the Simpsons episode with the poisonous pufferfish, also referred to as the Fuju. Um, but if, if the chef does not have the experience to fillet it properly, you will eat it and die. Um, we did not go there, but I did enjoy this giant inflatable pufferfish out front. 
Um, this was an arcade that our my friend Funny Ara took us to in Osaka. Uh, it's kind of like pinball, kind of like pachinko, where if you hit these numbers right, then they will then flip up, and these marbles continue to cascade down out um, and sit at the bottom. So if you're if you're lucky or good, you can play it forever, and I think you can win like a piece of candy or something. It was more about the thrill than the reward. Um, a giant octopus. Like, why wouldn't you take a photo of a giant octopus in front of a restaurant? So in Osaka, takoyaki is a big thing. It's basically a squid ball. It's a fried ball with squid in the middle, and they sell them on a skewer. So you're constantly walking around, and you see these food stalls, and basically, they have a pan that has the little round divots in it, and they're just continually turning these squid balls. They're delicious. And I just like that little guy. I mean, look at him. He's got a headband on. He's holding. He's basically eating his own family there. Uh, the Hitachi Tower again. Um, I think that was some type of organ. <laughs> like, we went to this rep. You go to restaurants, everything's on a stick. I think this was like weird organ meat and like beef fat. And so when I got there, my, but my friend was like, so what won't you eat? And I was like, well, I'll eat almost anything. Like, just keep it coming. So he's vegan. He used to eat meat. But he, got a, he really got a lot of enjoyment out of ordering food for me. And I got to the point where there were only a couple things I just could not eat anymore. There was one point where he ordered me raw squid, like little baby squid and soy sauce. And there were about six of them. And I ate three, and I was like, I'm done. And he's like, well, I thought you said you'd eat anything. And I was like, I can't eat any more raw squid. And then I got to the point where I was like, don't order me any more, like, organ meat or, like, entrails or, like, I just can't do it anymore. Just, like, chunks of fat. You know, you would go to a restaurant and you just get a plate of, like, beef fat. And I was like, I'd eat, like, half of it and just, mm, don't order me any more beef fat, please. <laughs> So yeah, I don't know what that was kind of uh, hidden by that breading, but it probably was something kind of gross. But I ate it. Puffer fish. Funny art, excited as always, in front of the puffer fish. Yeah, so I've known this guy like eight or nine years. He's a very interesting character. A couple of you out there have met him. Most of you haven't. But there were numerous times where so, found out my friend Jason and his wife were going to be in Osaka while I was there. So I'm like, funny art, I'm going to go like downstairs and meet Jason and Becky. We're going to like go out for a little bit. I'll be right back. So I go downstairs. And, so what do you guys want to do? Oh, let's go get some food, maybe grab a drink. And then I go upstairs and I'd be like, so, and funny art would be like, well, you just go. I've got work to do. Like, I'm going to stay here. So I'd go down, meet them, I'd come back upstairs, I'd go, so funny are, I think we're gonna go out and like grab a drink and some food maybe. Oh, oh, well, I'll meet you down there. I'm like, well, I thought you said you weren't going. Oh, I thought you were just gonna go shopping. If you're gonna go drink beer, like I'm coming. So he would like always do this like back and forth with me where it's like, oh, beer's involved? I'm out, come on. He likes to party. As I said, he likes to party. This is, uh, shit, what was the name of the part of my language? Uh, Don Quixote, which was a chain of like discount stores. Kind of like Walmart without all the white trash, but with more like cool like Ultraman and Godzilla toys. Um, and it's like three or four floors of just everything awesome. So we, and they're open 24 hours a day. So we would like go out drinking and then go shopping at Don Quixote at like one o'clock in the morning, which is why he looks so excited. Um, I think that might've been a corn dog place. 
even though it's low resolution. Oh, there's the RoboCop shirt. Um, looks like he's holding porn dogs. Back at the gaming parlor. Um, this is at the Rock and Jelly Bean store, which, since their children here, were probably better off. And those images are a little pixelated. Um, but it's a Japanese artist that I greatly admire. He has two boutiques, one in Tokyo and one in Nagoya. And the day we went to the one in Tokyo, they were closed, so I almost cried. So then we took a day trip to Nagoya to go to his other shop. And then this was like a vintage toy store that a friend of his owns called Zaka's. And that's another picture of me at the Erostica store. And me, he's like, hold up all your money. I was like, all right, I wanna, I'll look like a baller for a minute. So that was Three Tides Tattoo in Osaka. So I didn't even realize they had that toy on the window and we tried to buy it. Um, so again, the fact that I was with my friend Funny R gave me access to situations that probably I would never have done. So we go into this toy store. I get to Osaka on a Tuesday and I'm there for five days. So the first day I'm there, I'm like, let's go to the tattoo shop, see if I can get an appointment. So we walk in, talk to the artist. He's like, no appointments. And I'm like, oh, man, like I came all the way from Kentucky. I just wanted to get a tattoo at your shop, this and that. And he's like, oh, hold on a minute. So he goes upstairs, comes back down. It's like Monday at seven. I'm like, I'm in. And so when I go back to get tattooed, I'm like, I just want to thank you for like fitting me into your schedule. And he's like, well, if you didn't know Funny R, I never would tattooed you. And now he's like, well, next time you come back, give me a little notice, we'll add on to this tattoo. So I was very excited. This is a yokai monster. It's kind of a legendary Japanese monster. He's got this long neck and this tongue and you know, whatever. He's cool. I was stoked about it. Oh, another bowl of ramen. I believe this is when I got to my friend's toy factory outside of Tokyo. It was like 98 degrees out, and basically I took a train an hour and a half into the middle of nowhere to go meet him. So basically what happened was my friend Funny Aura, I think purposefully kept me out singing karaoke till like 3.30 a.m. I had to catch the bullet train from Osaka back to Tokyo at 7 a.m. So we got back to his place at like 3.30 or 4 a.m. I sleep for about an hour and a half. I'm still kind of loaded, trying to pack all my stuff up. He wakes up, comes downstairs, and I'm like, okay, 30 minutes. He's like, I'm gonna walk you to the station. I wanna walk you to the station. I'm like, fine. So 30 minutes later, I'm all packed up. I'm screaming upstairs, funny Ara, funny Ara. No answer. He finally comes hobbling down in his robe and his slippers. And I'm like, funny Ara, I have 15 minutes to get to Osaka station to make my bullet train that I've already put reservations in on. Like, I've gotta, I've gotta catch a cab. He's like, well, a cab's gonna cost you like 30 bucks. And I'm like, I don't care, get me a cab, I'm out. So I get into this cab, cab driver speaks no English. I basically show him my ticket, tell him I have 15 minutes to make it to the station, and he proceeds to like fast and furious our way to Tokyo Station, where I basically get to the platform two minutes before my train leaves. And Another thing about Japan, the trains are impeccably on time. So don't think that if you get there a couple minutes late that you're gonna make your train, because that train will be gone. So yeah, we had a delicious uh, ramen lunch at 98 degree. So this is my friend's toy factory. Um, so this is basically a cooling bath these are, these are the molds right here, copper molds, which basically we made this guy right here. So you basically uh, heat up the uh, vinyl. This is actually clear, although it seems milky white, it becomes clear when it hardens. 
Um, so basically you fill the mold and part of the art of it is knowing how long to leave it in before you pull, pour out the excess because it's a hollow piece. Those are some molds being filled in cooling in the cooling bath. And then those are what we pulled out of the molds that you would then trim and then create the figure out of. And there's the finished product. So this is a friend of mine, Shirahama Toy. Really good guy. Again, it was one of those places that I never would have had access to if my friend Funny R wouldn't vouch for me. And then we basically both hit it off because we just stayed up all night talking about freaky stuff. And then we ended with a few of my stickers that I placed where I would not get arrested because graffiti is a big deal there, right? Matt Ray? You get locked up for up to four months for painting graffiti. So, that was the presentation. Any questions? Thank you for coming. Or like promenades that go on for 10, 20 blocks. You just walk, 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 walk. I did a lot of walking. You know, like we'll try that a long time ago with the uh, Fourth Street Mall. Exactly. Yeah, same kind of concept. We mostly ended up, you know, just uh, a lot of flourishing wig shops. Right. Well, there's also no crime over there. Like you walk around at 3.30 in the morning and I had one night where a kid walked me like 12 blocks to my hotel because I, was, I got out the wrong side of a train station. And I was like, yeah, can you tell me how to get here? He's like, just come with me. And walk with me for like 20 minutes and drop me off at my hotel. So it's just a different culture. And the, the figures you make, are they part of a story or a narrative or are they just independent kind of creation? No, just like some figures. This friend of like, this is a crazy like spider dude. And then his wife has several figures that are a little more cutesy. So this is like a little whale. And this is a, um, like a Steve Dumpling headed guy. <laughs> um, but basically this guy, he makes toy. There was a lot of stuff I couldn't take photos of at his setup because it was work that he was doing for other people. These were his own original figures. So we were able to make these. So Paul, um, is, there any, is there any possibility where if you would design something, they would make Oh yeah, we've already talked about it. Yes, yes. The problem being, it's, it's a lot of money up front. For like mold. those molds that you see, I mean, for this figure alone, you've got four pieces. It's probably five or six thousand dollars just for the mold alone. So there's a lot of a startup cost involved. Which is why a lot of these, you see a lot of these um, Japanese toy makers doing different colors after different colors because it takes quite a few runs to just recoup your startup money. So they just have uh, these guys just sitting around and toy company and just making toys? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. This guy lives, he lives an hour and a half outside of Tokyo and he just decided he got a little bit of money from an inheritance and just, and they're very, everyone has their own techniques, so they're very private. You know, there were, there were a lot of things, like I said, that I couldn't take photos of because it's like, this is my technique. Like, I don't want anyone else to see this. Did you get Jude what to make? What's that? Get toys. Did I get toys to make? 
watch. You get to choose which one. Um, I got to choose the colors. This, these were the colors I came up with on my own. Which he liked so much that he said, well, next time you come back to Japan, like, let's do an ultra pop run for a convention or something. Because they turned out so good. As soon as I can. Hopefully within a year. You mentioned it was clear. Um, when did you have to cut the color, actually? That's, that's what the clear went in first. Okay. So I don't know how well you can see. If you look at the very tips of some of these, you can see some of the clear. So basically, you pour the clear in first, let it set, dump out the excess, and then pour in the green, dump it out, then pour in the blue, dump it out, and then the pink gives you your solid coverage to it. Um, and depending upon the mold, you know, like a smoother mold is going to capture more of the drip to the different colors, more so than something that's textured like this. Because it'll just kind of fill in the nooks and crannies as it, you know, most of them are poured upside down. So what are the value of something like this? And like what would this sell for? Or any of his toys? Probably 70, 80 bucks for this little guy. That's retail? Yes, retail. Wholesale, again, you know, a lot of the cost is involved in the upfront yeah. So like materials, this is probably like six dollars. But he's still paying off the mold, so he's not gonna sell it for ten or twenty dollars. And like this friend of mine in particular, he only sells his toys through a lottery because a big problem now with a lot of these Japanese toys is that people will buy them to resell them on eBay or Yahoo Japan. And so like the toy show that I went to the second day I was there, as soon as the doors opened, there were lines of like 50 to 100 Chinese guys, like just buying toys to resell. No interest in keeping them for themselves. And actually in the amount of time I've been in the hobby, it's really changed a lot because you just can't, you can't buy what you want anymore because it's constantly being bought and sold by other people you know and these guys will pay they'll pay a family of five people to wait in line for them and buy the toys and then put them on ebay or yahoo japan and sell them so he doesn't even sell toys at shows anymore because he knows they're just going to be bought to be resold and he wants them to get into the right hands so if he does a lottery, he can at least look at the people that have entered and know, okay, this guy's legit. He's been collecting my toys forever. This guy's legit. Okay, this guy's obviously a flipper. He's not winning. And kind of go that route. Isn't it still generate revenue for him, though? I don't understand what's going on. Well, yeah, but like if he sells this, this dude for $60 and then some guy sells one two days later for $200, it kind of chaps your ass a little bit. Right. Right. You know, there were toys, I went to the toy show on Sunday. Monday and Tuesday, I was shopping in vintage toy stores in Tokyo and I saw toys that were for sale at the show for $400 for $2,000 where someone had already bought it and sold it. And so, you know, when you're a toy maker, you're like, I would rather this get into the right hands than sit in a toy store and have someone pay $2,000 for it. Anyone else? Bueller? Everybody good? Well, thank you for attending the presentation. I appreciate the support. Um, I was going to bring some free stuff, but then I figured maybe I should just make you come by my store, and then I'll give you something for free if you tell me you were here. So we'll go that route. Thanks again, everybody. Have a great night.